This week on Maker Update, assume the party submission position, how to build a project bigger than you, robotic hands, and the wild history of blue LEDs. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update, the show where we keep you up to date on all the cool things that makers are making. I'm Tyler Weingartner and I hope you've all been doing great. I've been on a bit of a storage and reorganization kick lately, and hopefully you've got some cool projects keeping you inspired. We've got a great show for you, so let's check out the project of the week. It can happen to the best of us. You make it this far into the COVID pandemic and eventually you get bit. That's what happened to Dave of Dave's Armory. He saw this quarantine as the perfect opportunity to dig deep into a project and in the process, give himself someone to talk to. So he remade GLaDOS, everybody's favorite snarky AI frenemy from the Portal video game series. Cake and grief counseling will be available at the conclusion of the test. To really do justice to this character, you've got to get the voice right. The character sounds like an AI generated voice, but it's actually a human who recorded the voice lines while trying to sound like a robot. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says, a horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. And then several layers of audio processing and filters were added in post. There are actually quite a few voice models for GLaDOS that already exist, but none of them sounded right. Welcome to the armory. My name is GLaDOS. So Dave had to train his own model. Fortunately, all of the in-game voice lines are documented and the sound files are all accessible. Perfect for creating your own voice model. To process his recorded audio into text and then generate the GLaDOS-like responses, he began with using ChatGPT. The brains for this version of GLaDOS is an NVIDIA Jetson. But in developing the project, he realized he had enough available memory to run the large language model locally so he was able to dump ChatGPT and improve the response time. So now he's got a robot to talk to, but not one that he can look at. The body and the frame for GLaDOS is the Z1 from Unitree, a multi-axis robot arm with a two kilogram payload. The rest of the body is all 3D printed and a Z2 spatial camera module lets her see the environment and follow whoever she's talking to. The voice responses are snappy and reactive. The saying righty tighty, lefty losey is a common rule of thumb for remembering which direction to turn a screw or bolt. And she certainly sounds like GLaDOS. This is a pretty solid project, making good use of machine learning. And a great testament to getting stuck in on a project when you're under quarantine. More projects. Martina from the Nerd Forge is also stepping outside of her comfort zone by building a robot prop that's over three meters tall. Normally, the stuff she builds is pretty small. The overall frame for the bot is all made of construction lumber, two by fours, basically. After several days of construction, it was time to take the frame inside and start working on the cosmetic parts. The pretty stuff is all made from XPS foam that's been carved up using a variety of methods. The nice thing about working at a large scale is you can use common construction methods like filling these small gaps using spackle. The other crazy thing about this build is she had to build the whole thing in just 20 days. So of course she ran into a time crunch and had to go shopping for Greeblies instead of making them herself. I especially love the use of these plastic decoration dots for rivets. In this technique of using paper layers to make it look like layers of paint are flaking and rusting off is just fantastic. Tons of great tips in here. Evan Monsma is on a quest to turn this tiny action camera into a pint-sized camera rig with interchangeable lenses. This sounds like one of those projects where someone modifies the Game Boy camera to accept photography lenses, but there's something pretty special about this Insta360 camera. It has a one inch sensor. He uses a rehousing kit to allow him to mount micro four thirds lenses and everything gets kind of nuts when he starts modifying the cage so he can rig it out for everyday shooting. It's a very quirky camera with quirky lenses, but one thing is for certain, 
no one is going to have a camera quite like this one. I really enjoyed this video about how to build this nail wave machine by Karakuri. Most of the work is creating the nail bed, trimming all the nails to an identical length, then trapping them into this plate to keep them aligned, and then gluing ball bearings to the bottom of each of them so they can lift smoothly. This is all a setup so she can 3D print various patterns to deform the nail bed, allowing it to move this large ball bearing around. And the deformation plates can be easily swapped out for different patterns. Cool stuff. And finally, Will Cogley has made some real progress with his buy in a can project. The big step forward in this project is the addition of these small micro servos housed in the palm. This is a replacement for his older design that used this sort of deconstructed servo. The new solution is bulkier, but it's a lot easier to build, and it got this project back on track again. It's still a massively complex project with dozens of servos, and all the plans are currently available through his Patreon. But soon, he plans to make them all available for free to everyone. Time for some tips and tools from Scruffy Crow. I learned about the Tamiya Handy Drill, which is a small battery powered drill for creating pinholes in models or anywhere else you need small holes in soft materials. The funny thing about this drill is that it requires some assembly. This modeler's tool comes together like a model all on its own. Easy to see something like this coming in handy for a ton of different applications. Yasuhiro TV has a video with nine different hacks to get more use out of an angle grinder. I really like the addition of this base plate that allows you to easily clamp the tool to your workbench so you can use it as a small part sander or a drum sander. And with the addition of this other jig made from square tubing, even a belt sander. There's a lot of really clever stuff in here that takes some deft fabrication, but can help you get a whole lot more utility out of your angle grinder. And lastly, we have a fantastic video from Veritasium about why it was so difficult to create a blue LED. I know that doesn't sound like the most interesting topic, but settle into this one. Not only do you get a great physics and chemistry lesson in how diodes work, but you also get to learn about one of Japan's most stubborn and inventive creators, often fabricating a lot of his own lab equipment to make them work to his own specifications. The other revelation, for me at least, was seeing the whole world that blue LEDs open up. Not only were they the missing component in RGB displays, since you don't get very far with just red and green, but blue LEDs also gave us white LEDs, since white LEDs are just blue LEDs with a phosphor coating. This video gave me a really solid appreciation for these tiny blue lights. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, we have the latest video in Becky Stern's Electronics Teaching Series, and it's all about trying to wean yourself off of the Arduino delay function. Delay is one of the first ways you learn to introduce pauses into your program but they come at a cost. They completely occupy the Arduino's processor, which renders it incapable of responding to inputs while the delay is running. Becky shows a few different workarounds that allow your project to stay responsive while still having timed intervals between events using counters, the built-in timing chip available on some boards, and the Arduino timer function called Millis. Check it out. All right, and that is going to do it for this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, you can get additional info, code, files, and plenty more by looking up the links to each of these projects down in the description. While you're there, you can leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and hit subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Great big thanks as always to DigiKey for making this show possible and you for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon.